So yeah, this is our, our Flow Pro uh, development platform. Uh, it allows us to build mobile apps super rapidly without any programming or coding expertise. Uh, so you can see here a bunch of apps that we've created, uh, very much presenting as sort of icons on the screen. I can go into these and I'll walk through them. I will in a moment, just to start from a, a standing start. Uh, this is actually a sort of create canvas uh, that you would classically begin from. We've got a palette of view elements here and I can just click on the uh, view elements here and sort of type in my cool app like so and begin to build uh, my app, begin to lay it out on the screen uh, like so, and uh, very much customize on the fly, uh, change some of the formatting uh, dynamically, as you see here, and maybe uh, just a little bit of mods on the look and feel. Uh, so I'm just beginning to assemble um, a, a visual arrangement here. If I just uh, maybe select something a bit more sophisticated, like a map element, drop that in like so. Uh, so, so is it allow whilst using app and the map drops in. And this is again, able to be dynamically uh, experienced. This, is, this isn't a wireframe, it's not a, a mockup or a prototype. This actually is a real native working app that we're interacting with. I'll just add a second screen. We call them scenes. Uh, so I'll call it scene two like so, create that scene. And we get a convenience button uh, assigned. We can click into there and you see here, we've got uh, maybe something like, uh, let's take some uh, some charts uh, type of elements. Uh, let's just top in a bar chart like so. And again, we can just begin to build and this can be a very complex app. You can double click on this bar chart as with any of your elements and just begin to configure it. Uh, everything that you can do from a classic programming command line, you can do here uh, from uh, you know, from this configuration screens. Uh, we can drive it with data from varying data sources and so on. And just a, a word about data sources, we've got uh, a library of, uh, of third party uh, services that you can just grab, drop in. Uh, so there's no configuration required. You just literally click on one of these things. It expands and you can begin to use it from all manner of, uh, of, of, you know, of third-party backends. Uh, we've also got the ability to, to begin just to create your own uh, from, from scratch. Uh, we can analyze APIs that exist out there and, and we can build the interface dynamically in moments. And again, you've got the ability to bring in from, from definition files if, if they exist. So just gonna quickly switch to um, something that's assembled here. And, and if I just click into this uh, application here, we, we see that we've got uh, an app here, which has been built. It's bringing in data from a variety of sources, uh, servicing dashboarding type data. It's actually showing uh, data on Mars. Okay, so we're bringing in stuff from uh, the Martian environments. And you can see we've got uh, actually a lot of stuff integrated. We've got uh, here the, I just need to move my, uh, my screen slide so I can see what's underneath. We've got uh, Earth sounds. This may or may not be coming through on the audio. But if it is, hopefully you can hear it. I, I don't know if the uh, screen share permits the audio sound. But essentially, all these APIs uh, have been brought in uh, through uh, the mechanisms I just showed, all these interfaces, bird sounds, earth weather service, and so on, ge geocode service. So you can click into here, and you can get uh, the APIs. You can begin to configure them. You can begin to read the outputs and so on and map them to the view elements you see on the screen. Uh, but essentially, what we're seeing is something that saves you a lot of time a lot of effort, a lot of energy. You can convert your ideas into reality in an instant, and you can begin to assemble full-blown working apps, uh, proof of concepts, uh, prototypes, whichever you want to do. Uh, and you're working live on the device, um, so you're uh, effectively not needing to go through all those iteration cycles where you get dev time and UI time and then build time and so forth. It's an instant experience uh, environment. So um, that's a quick run through. I don't know how I'm doing on time. Hopefully I'm inside of the five minutes. Perfect, you've just got 30 seconds left. Okay. Um, well, I think I think we've, <laughs> in the remaining time, hopefully uh, I could just quickly show you uh, again, if I just tap into just a little bit of tech detail, you know, one of these graphs, let's say this one here, nice plot. You know, how does this work? We go in there, we go into the events, the data, and you can see that we're sort of driving in uh, values that have come back from the APIs that I, I show. This is actually the Mars Environment API. 
and we've got sort of air temperature being plotted into here, we can begin to uh, select different um, different assignments for the graph, and we get different uh, different plots that result. So hopefully it gives you a little bit of a flavor of uh, the rapid reconfigurability that you've got uh, as part of the tool. Thank you, Dominic, and thank you for giving us a product demo, which is exactly what this is all about. That's wonderful. Ori, uh, the power to you of the first question. What do you want to do I, with it? My God, my little mind is just blown away. This is amazing. But I do have some questions. Uh, I'll try to keep it brief. Uh, my first and most important question is, can you tell me a little bit about what your business model is? Is it subscription-based or what are you kind of looking at? Um, so, yeah, we have... Uh, um, two models essentially we have a services model where which is uh, where we build apps to requirements so we would use our own tool we like as a consulting exercise and build an app for you or where we work with organizations that have their own development resources or want to carry out that program then we also license our technology the licensing can be done on a subscription basis or an annual uh, recurring licenses as well Hopefully that answers your question. No, it does. I love it. I think it works very well um, on like the larger scale B2B, right? But I also see a real use for this on almost like a direct to consumer. Like, for example, when I got married a few years ago, we didn't do invitations. We just did an app. And that's how we told people that we were going to get married and it had the weather and it had all the maps and all of that stuff. So even something like that, I mean, I've obviously got the privilege of working in tech, so easy for me to do, but even mm -hmm. something like that, I think could be such a wonderful use. So I'd encourage you to think about um, how you can bring this to consumers, not just the in the B2B space. Thank you. I always said you're a bit of a geek, Corey. Thanks for that. All right, <laughs> uh, Tiana, what, uh, what questions do you have for this one? Uh, I would say this is very inviting. Congratulations. Even as somebody who knows how to code, I would love using something like this. I already have this in my mind, how I can do it quickly, right? And uh, it's uh, what, what we all uh, want. Uh, I do have some suggestions. Uh, I know it's a product demo, but still it's also business presentation. So I think the audience would love to hear about the theme who is behind this amazing product. I think it's very important to mention this. Uh, I even uh, remember once uh, uh, one investor telling me uh, that uh, they uh, they think a little bit like recruiters. Actually, they, they really pay attention to who is behind the product because with the right team, uh, as you know, the, the things really go uh, way better. So do mention the team. Uh, yeah. And uh, also, I don't know in which phase of the development you are, uh, but if you already have uh, launched somehow and have some users, even if it is between your network that somebody managed to create an application, it would be nice to see maybe a few screenshots or something of that. I think that's also nice. And that would actually be my question. Do you have somebody who is like a non-tech creator of an application that's done this successfully using your product? I would like to see this, this case uh, uh, like as an example, that would be super nice. Yeah, um, thank you uh, for that question. Yes, so we have, uh, in fact, uh, to your previous question, we have um, paying customers. So we have you know, done development services for our customers and we have licensed a product as well. Um, it's, um, it's targeted at a kind of non-professional uh, code. So it's more, more like a, a line of business user because you do have to have some semblance of IT knowledge in, in terms of kind of bringing uh, APIs, et cetera. But we kind of pitch it at a, a level that could be a citizen developer right up to a, a full blown developer just to make their life a lot easier and being able to uh, build applications a lot quicker than they would do if they use traditional methods like developing in Xcode or in Android Studio. But you know, we have a whole breadth of of users that could actually use use this product from non you know non technical to fully technical people. That's great. Sounds great. But do you have some example of of somebody who is like not officially technical uh, background person who created an app and right now has uh, paying customers uh, using this app in their business? I think it would be nice to just have an example of a case like this. Do, do, can you can you share one? 
So we, we, we've worked with, um, we haven't got it in a, in a visual demo here, but we've worked with a client uh, that's actually in the uh, recycling sector and they've, they've got their own UI person who's created solutions for them. Uh, and and you know, they will typically work with a technical team uh, in terms of the things that Rama mentioned there around APIs and so forth, but they're using their own UI person uh, to, to assemble solutions. So what, what you sometimes see is you get the UI person working with this and the, the tech with the sense, APIs yeah. and, the, and they collaborate, uh, bringing different parts together to assemble the solution. One thing to also mention is it runs, our, our solution runs as a native uh, iOS app. So it can be, you can use it on an iPad and you can sit right next to the person who you're building the app for and literally build the app on the fly. So where you might traditionally do a wireframe, in that same time frame, we could have built a, a fully working app for you. It's, it's that, mm -hmm. that quick. So it's that level of significant acceleration that we're bringing into the process. And that's a good point, thank you. So I only have like four or 5,000 questions for you guys at the moment, but I'm gonna yield the floor to Pedro uh, and then hopefully there'll be a bit of time for some of mine at the end. Okay, I'm going to throw in two, very simple, <laughs> if, if this two allows it. The first is this um, delivers na uh, nat native iOS apps. How do you deal with stores approval? Okay. Uh, it's, it's, it's actually not, it's, it's cross-platform. So what Dominic has demonstrated, we build that solution once and we create native iOS and Android solutions. And it's targeted to both wearables, phones, and tablet form factors, and potentially even smart TVs, although we haven't um, delved into yeah. that area. So we're kind of invariant to the device type, and we're kind of invariant to whether it's iOS or Android, because that solution only has to be built once. Yes, but this, this is the customer's duty to actually take care of the store's approval because that's a, a, a st relevant step. Yeah. So, in terms of, do you want to answer that? Yeah. So, in terms of the store approval, uh, that that is a, as you say, I mean, ultimately, what gets generated from this is either a standard iOS app or a standard Android app. Uh, so that ultimately has got the final stage where you've got to create the, the uh, you know, the, the assets that go into the Google or Apple processes. Uh, and we produce a completely regular iOS or Android app. That that, that particular stage at the moment, we've got uh, we, we we provide a sort of twenty four hour service around that. So when you finish your app, we we can package it and we can submit it on your behalf. Uh, we're actually working at the moment to to provide uh, automation so that we can step back from that. Uh, but at the moment, at the end of the cycle, there's a, a sort of twenty four hour service that we provide to so complete you that packaging step. So you support your customers till they get the approval. Great. Yep. The final question, which is uh, it's impossible to answer in two minutes, of course, but this: uh, how are you planning to deal with GDPR and cybersecurity? So we've got a lot of emphasis on security in what we've got here. Uh, everything that we do, we've got you know, various clients that are in a whole range of sectors, and we, we always get asked about security. And so, yeah, we, all the way through in terms of the data at rest, data in transit, and so forth. We've got in uh, protections, uh, encryptions, and so on to, to, to keep things as secure as possible. And we're going through at the moment a process of certification. Raman, you might want to say a couple of words around security uh, as well. Yeah, yeah so we're, we're looking at compliance against OWASP, which has a number of checklists for, for security, as Dominic mentioned, you know, data at rest, uh, data in transit. We can store locally on the device encrypted inf information as well. So if you've got sensitive healthcare or financial based information that should the phone get lo lost or stolen, you wouldn't want anyone to uh, decrypt. We can actually, you know, using AES 256, very str strong standard security mechanism to protect that data. So it is, it is something that, you know, we're, we're we're keen to adhere to and follow from a standards perspective. Okay, so if, if I'm allowed, just a, a suggestion, actually a couple two. Sure. One is, I know, I'm not sure if you are already compliant with the ICO 27,000, 20, 27, 
Okay, it's a, a standard for security. And uh, the second one is look into GDPR and CCPA and uh, yep. make sure you are compliant. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, so I just asked this very simple question, Roman and Dominic, what do you need? How can we help you as a community? I think, um, so at the moment, we, you know, the, the product is, as you've seen, is in, in a uh, developed stage. We're looking to get partners and, uh, and, and customers to um, expand the, the, the reach of other products. So, you know, people that are interested in trialing the solution, work, working with us in, t in terms of helping them with their app requirements it would be kind of an immediate uh, priority that, that we're looking for. You want customers, that's what you're saying? You want customers and partners, yeah. Okay, I think we can probably find some of those, can't we, Ori? We know some people that like apps. All right, thank you very much, guys. Really appreciate that, that's that's really good. And we gave you the full 10 minutes for Q&A there, so I hope that was, that was good for everybody. Yes, All thank right. you.